You may or may not already know that I crocheted my first pair of shorts in my last video. So it only seemed like a logical progression to try and knit a pair as well. At each stage, I'll award a stitch marker to the one I felt was most deserving. The waistband. The most noticeable difference in both pairs is perhaps the waistband. For the crocheted version, I had little choice but to settle for a single layered band, as anything more would have been thicker than a British pudding at any and every point in history. Needless to say, finding this out made for a difficult start in the crochet department, and it was a little bit of a failure to launch. Across the puddle, the knit waistband, although considerably more complex to form, had not only the suitability of being doubled, but could also spare enough room for an inappropriately sturdy elastic. Which, admittedly, I definitely regret purchasing. Since I was unable to elasticate my crochet waistband, I will forever run the real risk of developing a saggy band. I will not hear of any makeshift drawstrings on this channel, thank you very much. So with that settled, I have to give it to Team Knit. It may not be the most comfortable to wear, but the reasons for that are nothing to do with the knit itself, which turned out exactly how I wanted it to. Increases Naturally, to ensure the shorts can be worn, increases must be made. Now is a good time to explain that I've been knitting for a lot longer than I've crocheted. It's probably fair to suggest that this somewhat qualifies me to say that the crochet increases I used were a lot simpler than the knit. Okay, so hear me out. I'm not including the fact that I decided to incorporate a rib stitch throughout the entire project. Although to be fair, I kind of feel like it has some kind of corduroy effect, which I don't hate, but um, do I hate it? Have I just? No. Okay, don't think about it. Don't get me wrong here, the rib stitch definitely adds to the complexity of the project, but the increases would have been more difficult regardless. Knitting increases involve twisting the stitches to avoid the gaping holes that can easily occur. Not only this, but I had tried to incorporate yarn over increases prior to the make one increases, and they were just very holy, in a non-religious way. And even saying that, the make one increases have still left holes. I think one of my favourite parts about knitting on the wrong side is that the right side is just really flush with the waistband. And the thing is, I actually use a different gauge for the waistband than I am doing with the rest of the shorts, but the stockinette part of the rib really looks like I've used the same gauge. You can kind of see there's a bit of change here, but for the most part, from a distance especially, it looks really flush. For the crochet, however, I just had to insert the hook into the same hole again and again. So, you guessed it, the increases go to the crochet side. Time. That now leads me to the measure of time. Don't worry, I'm not getting deep on you, I just honestly didn't realise the contrast between these two methods would be as stark as it was. I mean, it seems reasonable to think that I could fit a couple of knit stitches in the same amount of time that it would take to finish a half double crochet. Nevertheless, what I definitely underestimated was the epic disparity in surface area coverage. To give you an idea of this, completing each pair of shorts took me a similar number of days and potentially hours, but in this window I was able to crochet the same shorts almost three times over just to get them right. For the knit version, I pretty much only had one somewhat major hiccup. The rest of the time was simply spent knitting my little heart out each night while binging the last of succession at 1am in the morning, under the conditions only non-natural lighting can provide. Naturally. So, if I were to do the maths, it would appear that there were approximately a gazillion more stitches to knit than there were to crochet. I should add, I made sure to use the same yarn and gauge for both shorts. And yes, the yarn was from the same 400 gram ball. In conclusion, crochet definitely wins out on speed. Short rows. Some of you may be wondering, what in the world are you talking about? And for anyone who's already familiar, you may be confused as to why this is even a category. Well, let me tell you. It must be said that short rows are far more common in knitting than they are in crochet. In fact, I had to google crochet short rows because I had never heard of them before. Suffice to say, they exist, but they're not as straightforward or as aesthetically pleasing. Apparently. Had I known about them at the time, I would have probably tried to incorporate them into my crochet shorts, or at least sampled them. That being said, short rows still don't appear to be an expected standard for crochet bottoms, so I don't feel too bad for not including them. 
And regardless, I think knitting wins this round anyway. I really don't want to relive this, but it's probably one of the more make or break aspects of this comparison. To inject a little more context, I didn't use an existing pattern or follow a tutorial for either of these shorts, and it was easier for me to figure out the crochet crotch than the knit crotch. This was mainly due to the fundamental natures of both methods. With knit, you have to constantly keep in mind how the two needles are going to separate and meet at the right times. If you get it wrong, it'll end up looking something like this. Disaster has finally struck. It looks so strange. This happened. Yeah, as you can see, the needle that I'll need to remove, the um, the red wire, isn't budging. So I'll have to undo all of this and part of me still thinks there must be a way through this, but I can't for the life of me think what that could be right now. All hope has been lost. So huge revelation. I actually figured it out and it turned out I just placed my needle, my new needle, in the wrong place. With crochet, however, the main thing to consider is which side you need to work on to make sure the stitch pattern is correct. And since both crotches are pretty much the same in terms of how they look, crochet wins out again for its straightforward simplicity. And finally, the last round, finishing. This one should be pretty simple. Well, sort of. Both shorts require weaving in a similar number of yarn ends, providing that your yarn is continuous to begin with. However, knit always requires casting or binding off. The term you use depends on where you're from. If we also consider the faff involved in creating the elasticated waistband, such as finishing and sewing the elastic, as well as knitting the two waistband edges together, the crochet shorts come out in a very clear first place here. But can I give this last round to the crochet shorts simply because the finishing is… easier? I don't think so. Although there's clearly more technique and labour involved in the knit short finishings, it's precisely because of these finishings that I'm more drawn to wear them over the crochet shorts. So, do we have a winner? As always, yes and no. I know which ones I prefer to wear, but they're not the ones I would prefer to make a second time around. And if we're going to take my comparison chart seriously in any way, it's a draw between the two. In terms of how these two shorts make me feel, I get the impression that the knit shorts have a more loungewear, fall and autumn vibe, with ironically a lot less coverage, whereas the crochet shorts have a similar vibe, but are arguably more versatile in the sense that they also look quite summery. Does this mean that knit and crochet inherently have their own times and places in the world? Not really. At the end of the day, knit and crochet are just two different languages, and it's cool that you can say the same things with them. 